dreams come true Today we are going to celebrate teachers that have changed people's lives I want to introduce to you a friend of mine. She sent in a beautiful letter about a teacher that she really, really remembered and that changed her life, Miss Sophia Rosado. Miss Maxwell was my sixth grade teacher in 1986. I had come to this country only four years before and I was still insecure about my English and my social skills. So Miss Maxwell gave me incredible confidence when she decided to read my poem out loud in class in front of everybody. It was a Mother's Day poem, and even though I don't remember the words, I remember feeling pretty proud that I made the words dress and caress rhyme. So she told me I could become anyone I wanted, and she gave me permission to succeed because she was expecting me to. She treated me as if I should be exceptional, which was great, and because of her, I was inspired to do well in junior high school, and in high school, and in college. After arriving at the U.S. With, with nothing, I ended up going to a great Ivy League school, landing a dream job, and helping my family become financially independent. I remember this journey really starting because of Miss Maxwell. I uh, wanted to let all of you know that Miss Maxwell reminds me of the importance of having great teachers. They are just selfless angels and incredible sources of strength. So thank you. I want to talk to you about Adopt a Classroom. It's an organization that has inspired so many people across the country to help children in their education, but also this event was created because of the passion and, and the determination that its executives have put forth. I want to introduce the founder of Adopt a Classroom. Let's welcome Mr. Jamie Rosenberg. Good evening. It was back in about 1998 when I first conceived of the idea of Adopt a Classroom. And the idea came from the fact that the issues of education seem so challenging, they seem so vast and almost too grand for any one individual to try to tackle. But I figured if we could just break it down to one classroom, if I could adopt a classroom, if Susie could adopt a classroom, if you could adopt a classroom, if each one of us were to adopt just one classroom, collectively, the impact would be monumental. So it was at that time when I had my idea that I called my friend, Max Holtzman. Max, why don't you come on stage? I had a recent experience that I think parallels the growth of this organization that I want to talk to you a bit about. I had the privilege to work on now President Obama's uh, presidential campaign. And the path of that campaign was similar in a lot of ways to the path of Adopt a Classroom. There were naysayers in the beginning. People didn't believe it would happen, didn't believe it could happen. There were doubters. But Jamie's vision, which I'm so happy to be a part of, he just kept his nose to the ground, he kept focus, and he didn't listen to any of that. He just went forward. And that's the same thing that happened with the presidential campaign. People counted us out, they didn't think we could make it, and everyone knows what happened. So my parallel is this, that other than the fleet of 747s, the command of the largest military in the world, the commanding presence when he walks in a room, incredible intellect, other than those things, you are just like Barack Obama to me, Jamie. Thank you. I get that Barack mix up all the time. It's, it's almost embarrassing. So here we are 10 years later, and Adopt a Classroom has raised $10 million. We've helped over 30,000 classrooms in all 50 states and the U.S. territories. And we've estimated that we've helped improve the learning environment for over 1 million children. So tonight, we want to bring light to the issues that revolve around teachers, the importance of helping teachers. We would like to pride ourselves in the fact that while the issues are serious, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Enjoy the show.